shooting different genres of photography. This is the Wild Eye Podcast. Hey everybody, my name is Jerry, I'm from Wild Eye. And the thought for this episode came from the following. Next week I'm heading to Hogs Back, where I'm planning to go and do some photography. Personal project, I'm going to create a bit of a landscape portfolio of the place, also macro. And that both is a result of new tech. So I got a new macro lens from Olympus. I got a new landscape lens, an 8-25 to f4 from them. I also have Nisi filters, which I'm prepping to shoot in Iceland. Now, that made me think about branching out from only wildlife photography and being a wildlife photographer per se, right? Then... I was scrolling around Instagram, and this coming Sunday evening from 4 to 7 o'clock, I'm going to be taking part in a workshop, not hosting, it, taking part in a cityscape, kind of landscape city workshop, right, where we can photograph the sunset over the Johannesburg skyline. Super pumped for it. It's something I haven't done, like, formally or, or what's the word, or kind of uh, seriously. I've always kind of just played around with it, take a shot here and there, but not take a tripod, take my filters, set up and do the whole thing. I'm super psyched about that. But then what I thought is there is an automatic skills transfer when you photograph different things. So, for example, if you shoot landscapes, you learn different things about composition and about looking for things like the vanishing point and so on and so forth. And that will carry over when you point your camera at wildlife again. Same thing, if it's cityscapes, I might learn things about lines and how to fix uh, converging lines on on, on Photoshop or Lightroom. So there's always a skill transfer. So then I thought to myself, let me have a quick look. How How many genres of photography? Because I used to shoot weddings in the past. I used to do hospitality photography where I photographed lodges and so on and so forth. That was all a bit of a commercial venture when I was younger. But nature and wildlife photography has always been it. So I thought, let me Google and see what different types of styles of photography there are. Now, just bear with me here. This is a list of 28 different types or styles of photography. Ready? Nature photography, landscape photography, astrophotography, storm photography, pet photography, macro photography, flower photography, architecture photography, real estate photography, drone photography, aerial photography. Portrait photography, headshot photography, fashion photography, sports photography, documentary photography. Street photography, wedding photography, food photography, product photography, still life photography, black and white photography, fine art photography, double exposure photography, surreal photography, abstract photography, and I'm sure there's more. But that's a list that I found online, and I'm thinking, whoa. Should you, and this is a question, should you as a photographer worry about pigeonholing yourself and to or to to kind of steer it this is me i'm going to put myself in this block and that's it i do find that a lot of wildlife photographers are like that that they they only shoot wildlife and even when they're traveling through africa or svalbard where i'm going next they don't really double down on the photography side of things they they feel they only must and only can and only should do wildlife I think you're missing out, not just not just from a learning point of view, but also from a, an enjoyment point of view, a growing point of view. Because if you're going to start photographing, for example, you go to the Sabi Sands and you drive up, for argument's sake, right? There's places along the way where there's insane photography, right? You can do travel, you can do small villages, but I only shoot lions, so I'm not going to do it. I think we as wildlife photographers can be quite a difficult group in that that's the only thing I do. I'm not going to take my camera when I go to the market this Sunday because there's no lions and elephants there. I think that's wrong. I think we're blocking the creativity because, let's be honest, we can't see lions and elephants every single day. Well, some of you guiding, and I used to guide in lodges, you can maybe. But for the majority of people, we have a life that has different aspects to it. Surely our photography can have different aspects as well. I can take my camera to the market this weekend and I can photograph the people, the place, I can do macros, I can do close-ups, I can do photography. So so again, do you think we should, as photographers, 
niche ourselves so heavily that we don't do anything else? Does it not stand to reason, and I'm asking the question here, does it not stand to reason that if I broaden my skill set as a photographer by shooting various genres, if I do that, doesn't it stand to reason that I'll be a better all-round photographer and I, my specialized area or genre will then be even better? I 100% believe that. I do. I have, for example, been in cities and stuff where uh, New York, um, Hong Kong, Reykjavik, take your pick, and I'll only use my, 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 my iPhone, but I'll approach it from a wildlife point of view where it teaches you to not, not go for the shot that's there, but rather go for the shot that you want and you'll plan ahead. Where travel photographers might not always do that. I'm not saying they don't, but it's a very specific wildlife thing. Look at the behavior, look at repetitive patterns, apply that to a different genre and you got magic. So I'm not in for all of these 20, 100, 20, 800 million, whatever genres that I'm looking at on my screen here. But I do believe that if you're a wildlife photographer and you're not shooting different genres, that you are gonna fall short. I really think so. I think that you're going to be a better photographer if you shoot more. You use your camera more. You shoot things that make you slightly uncomfortable, right? That shoot make you slightly uncomfortable because it teaches you things. It makes you think again. When I'm up on this 28-story building on Sunday and I'm photographing Joburg skyline, it is out of my comfort zone. It 100% is out of my comfort zone. But I'm going to then take my compositional skills from, from nature and wildlife and a certain amount of landscape and apply it. I'm gonna have to assess it and change it. And eventually then I will be able to execute by taking old information into new information, processing it and creating an image. That is how we grow. So for me personally, one of my things this year, so I was in Madikwa a little while ago for a, 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 a wildlife photography, private wildlife photography tour. But I'm going to double down on this weekend and shoot the cityscape a lot and try things and learn and listen to people who are with me on the workshop, right? I'm going to double down on the landscape side of it with my filters because I'm not always seeing lions and leopards, but I can always go and find a landscape very close to here where I am in Joburg. Macro, I can do it in my garden. So my creative voice personally got a little bit flat like going into and through COVID because it's like, eh, okay. But it was all defined by you need to photograph wildlife. I don't. And I'm going to make a point this year of stepping out of my genre comfort zone and do different things. And I urge you to do the same. I urge you to have a look at where you're going, what you're doing. If you're going away for the weekend with the kids, take your camera with, sit off the side when they're playing, use a 7200 and create kind of candid images. It's amazing. It really is amazing. The things we can photograph, but we don't. So that's my thought. I'm going to double down on various genres, uh, cityscapes, travel photography, landscape photography, macro. Wildlife will always be there. I can go and do wildlife, and I'm good at it, and you guys are good at it as well. But step out. Challenge yourself a little. Do something else. And then we can share new things on Instagram. And isn't that cool? Right, guys, as always, thank you for listening. If you have any questions or comments or you want to share thoughts about what genre you shoot or what genre you find very difficult, please get in touch. My email address, jerry, G-E-R-R-Y, at wildeye.co.za. That's two words, wild eye with a dash in between. I would love to hear from you. Um, that's about it for this episode. I will chat to you in the next one. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. Have a good one. Bye for now.